Hi. So, parents out there, I was wondering, how are you doing? How are you doing parenting during a pandemic? Knowing that there is no set of parents that have actually done this, unless it's like a hundred years ago. And if you are fortunate to talk to somebody who's actually done this, they're at least a hundred years old and hopefully they have not passed away or, well, I don't know if you're talking to that, you shouldn't be. Um, how, how are you doing? I mean, it's funny how we just thought that this was just going to be going back to normal pretty quickly. I kind of had a feeling it wouldn't be, but uh, I think, you know, it, it was one thing. I'm, I'm noticing that the kids are getting used to fancy breakfasts. That's one thing I've noticed. Um, my kids recently were okay with cereal at one point, but, you know, since I'm home, I, I, I can give them more. So, you know... I'll make like pancakes and you know some sausage or hot uh, or bacon or and then some fruit and a boiled egg. So the other day I just made them some cereal, you know, just warmed up the cereal and milk. And they looked at this and they're just like, "What? What's going on? Are you okay? Like, what's happening?" I'm like, "Nothing. Like, where's their pancakes? Like, where's the boiled egg in the in the egg cup? Where's the fruit? Where where's all this stuff?" I'm like, "You're not supposed to get that like on a Wednesday. You're supposed to just." have the cereal, you know, that's a Saturday breakfast, but we're having this breakfast almost every day now. And I don't know about you, but I'm finding that I'm cooking quite a bit. Um, I'm cooking way more than I ever cooked before. And I'm not complaining. It's just that, you know, when you cook a lot more, you eat more too, and that's not helpful. So, you know, I'm trying to lose weight from the pregnancy. I had a baby. Oh, I was pregnant during a pandemic as well, so that's been fun. Um, I mean, I was even eating my feelings, like, and I made, well, I'm eating for two, and I was good. Like, the first pregnancy I had, I ate for two, and I went overboard. The second pregnancy, I didn't, because I was like, I don't want to do that again. And then it's been a big gap, like six or seven years, and then I thought, okay, I'm not going to do that again. But then, you know, it was a pandemic, and, you know, cheesecake makes you feel better. And then there was a lobster surplus, and quite frankly, the lobster was at chicken prices, so, you know, you can't really, um give that up so uh, you know, yeah I've gained a bit of weight and now I have to lose it um and I can't go to the gym downstairs what do I do um my husband runs a lot he's like the running maverick he runs and I'm just you know he runs so far and so fast you know I just hope he comes back every time because it's just it's, it's ridiculous like he's running like 10 kilometers 12 kilometers 20 kilometers, well maybe not 20, but I mean I'm sure he could if he really wanted to. He's running like, just, I don't know, like he's training for some kind of Olympics and to be honest, like if there's an Olympic for people in their late 30s, early 40s, he could probably be quite a contender. Like I think he's probably could beat his high school times. Um, I don't run. Uh, <laughs> so I, try, I was like, well maybe I could try to run with him. I'm like, I'm not there, but I mean, everything starts in the mind first. You never know. You, you'd never know. I would impress myself. If I could run even half of what he's running, I would be impressed with myself. And I think, you know, we just have to make a decision and with so many things. And I know for me, it, it, fitness is definitely something that, you know, I have to incorporate into my day. And I feel like I'm so busy, you know, with the kids, running a business from home. I have to homeschool. Like, where do I find the time? And I keep hearing this lovely little whisper in my ear, get up at 4 a.m. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I too get up at 4 a.m. because of this person here. But I usually am very desperate to go back to sleep. However, there are times where I do not go back to sleep and I'm lying in the bed just staring at the ceiling thinking I should just get up now because really... This is a great time. This is like the me time that I'm looking for. But I don't want to get out of bed because it's 4 a.m. But I'm thinking that that might be the key to a lot of things. Where, you know, maybe for me, and maybe you have the same the same deal where you're just at home all the time. Um, trying to navigate work. School, like you just, it's all your world. It just collapsed into one big whoosh. Like where do I find the time to just, to, to, even focus on work or focus on your business like for me I have to focus on my business I create online courses I write music books I write books in general like um you okay you're right you're good. Um, 
Okay, so, you know, how do we, where, 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 where do we find the time? And I don't want to be the person that's like, oh, I can't find the time and make excuses. And so often, people will tell you, well, maybe you should just not bother with it. Maybe you should just, you know, give up. You ever have a dream and you want to tell, you tell somebody like that dream that you have, that vision, and they just crush it? Like, they just, just, bleh, like, you can't do that. Who do you think you are? And all of this lovely negative blah that comes out. And you realize you have to really just protect your dreams and protect your vision. Do you have a vision board? Do you have, like, a vision statement? Do you have, like, a, a tattoo statement of that purpose? Like, do you know what your purpose is? I know what my purpose is. My purpose is to heal, educate, and empower. It took me about six months of, like, seriously thinking about that. Um, to actually come up with a statement of what I wanted. I actually have it, it's tucked away in my Bible. I have a statement of what I need to achieve in my life to fulfill my purpose, what I believe God has put me on the planet for. And if I had to reduce it to three words, it's to heal, to educate, and to empower. Um, I think if I were to ever have a tattoo, I'm afraid of needles, so I don't really want to have a tattoo, but if I did, that would be what I would tattoo myself. Heal, educate, and empower. Um, but here's the question. Do you know what your purpose is? Uh, it's so funny. I always feel like I'm starting the video with one intention, and then I go to something deeper. But I think what I'm really asking as a parent, are the parents, are you guys okay? Are you getting lost in all of this? It's okay to feel a little bit lost in this. It's okay to feel a little bit lonely in this. Like, reach out, comment. Like, I, I'm serious because it's it's very isolating. I don't think we've ever really been in a situation where it's just been so crazy and then we're bombarded with all this stuff. And then we're thinking, okay, well, what are we bringing these kids into? Like, how do we parent like, and be good parents in all of this? I'm going to say a few things. The virtual schooling is hard. Um, I do homeschooling. I decided to opt out of the screen time and just do curriculum and homeschooling with my children. Just because I had a newborn. I have two small children, one in grade one and one in grade two. And I just felt that, you know, putting them on the screen, making them sit there, it was just not going to work. I saw it, especially with my son. Like, no. The only way he'll sit in front of a screen is to play a game for a minute. Mm. And then having a newborn on top of that, I just, you know, I didn't think that that was going to work. Um, but I did a lot of, like, research in terms of getting great curriculum stuff and there's so many great free resources as well, like there's like Khan Academy and some stuff like ABC Mouse, which isn't free, but you know, you can, and it's not that much money per month and the kids are engaged on that and then they have like, there's different things you can get them, Raz Kids, and so there's, there's a lot of things that you can have that are available to them, but you don't have to be worried about like making sure that they get up in time at 8.30 in the morning. Mm. Oh, notice that. <laughs> you know, so I've been able to navigate that and work that into a schedule. You hungry? Maybe. So, you know, we just trying to get all of that in addition to having a newborn. You know, I'm trying to make my life a little bit more manageable. So between that and trying to build a, and building a business, not trying, building a business as well, working from home. Um, it's been kind of crazy and not being able to have people come over like my mom can't come over I'm not really seeing anybody except for my immediate family which I think a lot of us are you know we have FaceTime and everything like a lot of people my family haven't even seen my son in real life and like they see pictures and stuff but just not just not like you know it it's been crazy because I know that they would see him and and you know it's it's isolating and I'm not just talking to parents you know what like how's everybody doing I'm just asking like just checking in like it, it, it's kind of crazy but you know what we just got to breathe we have to be grateful for where we are and what we have and I'm sure there have been many blessings in co with COVID I get to see my family a lot more 
I get to not just run by my kids or rush from like my store to school and then realizing I'm not even spending any time with them and then they're going to grow up and then I'm not even going to know them or even know what the heck is happening before, you know, like, at least I get to see what's happening. I get to play games with them. I get to teach them how to cook, clean. <laughs> I get to just, you know, experience my kids fully and I'm seeing that, you know, in no time they just grow up so fast. Like, my daughter, as I said, is eight years old, and mm. I just feel like I just remember her being like this. And, you know, before you know it, she'll be 18 and mm. 19, 20, 30. She'll be gone. Mm. And mm. I don't even want to think about it. But, you know, I'm just enjoying them. And, yeah, they drive me crazy sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but um, I really wouldn't have it any other way. Uh mm. I just, just asking how you guys are doing, how are you coping, what are the strategies you have? I mean, I like taking brisk walks. Sometimes I get a minute to myself, I'll take a walk by myself. Sometimes getting up early in the morning is the best thing, just to have that me time. Having a walk with the kids is good too. Get that energy out so they can actually go to sleep, you know, because they won't go to sleep if you don't get the energy out. And, you know, that helps you with the weight too, right? Um, just like little things like that trying to, you know, make them not feel bad because they miss their friends. They miss going out to school. They miss their teachers. They miss all of that. And, you know, you can't, you don't want to take any frustration that you might have on them, even though that's not necessarily easy. But, you know, we're all just, everyone's just trying to cope and adjust and adapt to this new normal because we really don't know what's ahead. You know, we could say the vaccine's coming out and you take the vaccine and you're good to go, but, I mean, we really don't know what's happening. We don't know. Other people know. I don't know what's happening. But all I know is that you can just adapt and adjust and keep going. Don't get down. Don't make all the fear of what's happening on the media make you scared because God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. So, you know, you just got to keep going. Gotta keep pushing forward. Just got, gotta keep soldiering. I mean, as a mom, you just have to soldier on. Mom, dad, anybody. You gotta soldier on. You just gotta keep going. So, you know, I think he's hungry. So, I should feed him. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. You know, just uh, checking in, hoping everybody's all right. Hoping that, uh, not letting this pandemic get to you. There's a lot of blessings in this. And got to look at the great things that are happening around you. And be thankful for the things that are happening around you. And focus on that. Focus on the good things. Focus on gratitude. Focus on what's positive and what's going right. Don't focus on the things you can't control. Because you can focus on the things that you can control. You can control your mind. You can control your finances on some level. You can. You, you actually you can control your finances because you can always do something to if you don't have enough money find a way to make more money you have control over your life you might not be able to control covid but you can stay at home you can wear your mask you can do what they ask you to do and you can just do that and push on and don't let anyone take your sunshine away this has nothing to do with music <laughs> But in the next video, you will learn something about music because, you know, music is so much fun. And I hope you get to jam the way that I like to jam. So, you know, that's it. Have a good day.